This is question three of the 2020 uh, electricity exam, level three. Right, what do we got? Capacitors are commonly used in electrical circuits. They store and dissipate energy. Um, in a disposable camera, capacitors charged by a battery. The energy is taken, was it? Yeah, is used to flash the bulb while the photo has been taken. Um, it's got that big of a capacitor, 1.2 times 10 to the negative four. Camera supplied with battery, well, it's got a three volt battery. Oh, it's got a little bit of internal resistance as well, or oh, no internal resistance. A simplified diagram is provided there you go sketch a graph on the space below to show what happens to the size of the current over time as a capacitor charges state what determines the size of the maximum current um, so i mean the current's just going to decrease and decrease and decrease until i need to move my camera around a little bit it's a bit annoying um it's going to just decrease and decrease until yeah as the capacitor charges up so we'll do like i'll just move my calculator out of the way do a little graph like so. Should have used maybe no, I can't actually use a different color. Um, this is going to be current, and this is going to be time. I mean, I should write the full words, shouldn't I? Time, and then I'll call this current. Um, and it starts off at max current. What is the max current? Have we got R somewhere? No, we don't. So. This is going to be I max. I don't know what that is. Um, and it's just going to knock off. Not X, oh, what's the opposite of exponentially? Whatever the opposite of exponentially is. Um, sweet. State what determines the size of the maximum current. Um, oh, no. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, that's going to be annoying, isn't it? Right, hopefully that flash stays on. Um, what determines the maximum current? It, de it depends on the, well, V, wait, hold on, I is equal to V over R. So depends um, on, I'll just pause and write it. So I've said it depends on the battery voltage and circuit resistance brackets R. Um, right, calculate the energy stored in the capacitor once it's fully charged. Compare this with the energy supplied by the battery and account for any difference in energy. Um, sweet, so E is equal to half um, QV, but it's equal to also half, because Q is equal to, uh, Q is equal to CV, so it's R equal to half uh, CV squared. So when it's fully charged, Ooh, but switch B is, hold on. Switch A is closed, B remains open. Does B stay open? Yes. Cool. Um, so when it's fully charged, this is gonna be three volts across the battery. I mean, you can't see it. It should be three volts across the battery, so that's gonna be equal to half, what's C? One point times 1.2 times 10 to the negative four um, times, it's three squared is nine. Ah, that's right, three squared. And that is going to be equal to, I don't know how many joules. That gives us 5.4 e to the negative 4 joules. So 5, 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4 joules. Um, right, so compare this with the energy supplied by the battery and account for any difference in energy. So, how do I explain? So, when the capacitor is charging, well, let's just think about it. So. When the capacitor, oh yeah, yeah. when the capacitor is charging, the voltage is slowly increasing. However, um, so yeah, you know, each plate's getting yeah. You know, it starts off with I don't know half a joule per coulomb as like a battery, and it works its way up. So if you, I'll just draw it here actually because it doesn't matter. Um, the voltage increases up like that. However, the supply voltage is just always three volts. So you get this difference, this shaded area here where there's a bit of an energy discrepancy, because this is time, so the area under the graph is the total energy used. Um, so this, this shaded area here, and this, this is three volts, because that's what it's gonna charge up to. This shaded area here can never, it's like, it's like a, not a paradox, but like a kind of, uh, yeah, you can never get it. So even if you had two capacitors, um, I'll just draw it up here, um, a capacitor here, and a capacitor here, and then a switch here, and then it was open. And these are identical capacitors, like that. 
these are identical capacitors and there's no resistance in the circuit whatsoever and we put in a super uh, not a, uh, super cooler not super cool what's the word for it it's super conducting so we've cooled it right down if this is charged and this is uncharged and you flip the switch you'd expect the you know the charges to flow and then if this was six volts these are identical you'd expect this to go down to three and this would be three volts and you'd you'd be like sweet that's fine that all makes sense the energy has just gone from this one to this one they've halved it what actually really happens is if there's no resistance, you get a massive change in current because all circuits have to be a closed loop. You get a massive magnetic field and that dissipates the energy. So you cannot get away with it. You can't you can't get away with it at all. So E cell, um, E cell um, is equal to double or two times E cap. Um, and the energy, energy is lost I don't know, as heat heat due to the resistance the resistor resistor there we go uh, and we're not going to talk about electromagnetic waves because I mean it's just NCA but that, that's how it works so there's a physics stack exchange question uh, not question answer um, that goes through I think in one of my previous videos I've got the link I'll see if I can find it um, no, I can't be, I don't know if I can be bothered. Um, I'll see what I do. Emily decides to investigate capacitors further. She uses a sheet of plastic, aka a dielectric, with the thickness of that and a relative permanent. Okay, sweet. Um, by placing metal foil on either side of the plastic sheet to make a capacitor, calculate the area of the metal foil on either side of the plastic sheet. Wait, hold on. Calculate the area of the metal foil. On either shot side of the plastic sheet, Emily would have had to have used in order to get the same capacitance as the camera flash. So this is just the whole formula. C equals what is that formula? Um, oh God, I have to tell me how to look it up. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. Turns out I can. It's the uh, dielectric, no, the permittivity of free space times the area over the distance. That's it. And then you've got a scaling factor of the dielectric constant. Um, and that just times the whole equation. I mean, in the formula sheet, I'm pretty sure it's around the other way around. Um, so, sweet. What are we trying to find? Area, aren't we? So, we're going to rearrange this for the area. So, the area is going to be equal to CD. Uh, I'm going to put divided by brackets. What are it, Epsilon naught times the dielectric constant. And that is going to be equal to... Um, what's capacitance? 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 times the separation distance, that number, 2 times 10 to the negative 3, I'm going to make it shorter, um, divided by, I'm using like primary school divided by, uh, was it 8.85 or 8.84, uh, it is 8.85, 85 times 10 to the negative 12, that should be 12. And then the scaling factor is 10, because it's a dielectric constant. Um, and that is going to give me, what is the area? I'll just put it down here somewhere. What have we got? 2,711.86 meters squared. That is a ridiculous amount. Um, and... On either side, so I don't know whether it's asking for the total area. Calculate the area of the moon. Okay, I'll look at the answers. No, it seems to be mine's correct. But some kind of implies calculate the area of the middle for either side. Okay, on either side. Okay, so it sounds like just one side. Um, so what do we got? 3SF, 3SF. That doesn't count to it at all because it's just a scaling factor. So this should be 3SF. So down here, A should be equal to 2. 17 meters squared. Cool. Um, radio. Emily experiments with two capacitors by precharging them and connecting them in parallel. She takes 1.2 farad capacitor and charges it to 50 volts. This one here. She takes a, that a 1 farad, charges it to 40 volts, and connects the two in parallel such that the positive plates connected together. Shown in the diagram, describe the direction of motion of charge once the capacitors connect together. This has a higher voltage. We'll run that one backwards. By calculating the total charge, show the common voltage each capacitor has once equilibrium is reached is 
Um, hence, calculate the new charge on capacitor A once equilibrium has been reached. Man, this is literally, this is kind of deja vu because I was just talking about that. I haven't actually gone through this paper. I'm, I'm lazy. I used to write out all the answers and then uh, like sort of read them off. But now I just do them on, do these questions with like on the fly and have sort of answers in front of me just in case I stuff up. Um, sweet. So I'll just pause and write the first, do the first bullet point. Right, so see the charges will flow from A to B, A to B, higher potential to lower potential. Because um, this is 50 volts, it's going to dominate that one there. Right, the next one we're going to find Q total, because we want the total charge. And that equals QA plus QB. A, that should be an A plus QB. Um, and we remember that, uh, what the heck is a formula for a, um, C equals, wait, hold on, Q equals CV. Um, so that is going to be equal to uh, C A, no V A, plus C B uh, V B, and that is going to be equal to. I'll just quickly write it out. Right, so I just wrote that out, and that is this equals uh, zero point zero one uh, coulombs. Right, what's the next thing it wants? Uh, show that the common voltage each capacitor has. Once, uh, wait, is that so? We're going to add these two to the. Oh, wait. Yeah, we'll find the total capacitance of these two, and these are parallel, so you just add them together. Um, so, V, oh no, total, I suppose. Um, so, I'll call it V common is equal to that. Seems a bit weird to write at VC. Uh, it's going to be equal to what is it equal to? Yeah, V is uh, what was the formula? V is Q total. Uh, oh, Q common. Yeah, Q total over C total. There we go. And that is going to be equal to zero point zero one divided by what's the total it's going to be these two added together so it's going to be 1.2 plus 1 okay they're in the same there's going to be 2.2 times 10 to the negative 4 they're in parallel um so they just add together opposite two resistors um, and that is going to be equal to huzzah 45.45 volts 45.45 volts and you got to ask yourself well why does this you know why does this occur why is this like, you know, they have the same voltage? Well, if they had different voltages, currents would flow from one to the other. So the potential energy difference between the two is zero. That's why they got to have the same voltage. Um, and now calculate the new charge on capacitor A. Uh, which one's capacitor A? That one there. So Q of A is equal to CV. C of A times V of A. And that is going to be equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 times 45.45. And that is going to be equal to, we've got 5.45. 5.454 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs. Um, and we'll just round this up. That's equal to 5.45 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs. Right, that's it.